on the Wado Radio Show. Yeah, man, DJ Wado, of course, it's the Wado Radio Show. It's more than music, it's ministry. And we got a vet on the line with us, man. Benja, what's up, my brother? What's going on, man? Doing all good over here. Hey, man, I'm I'm, I'm chilling, man. I'm, I'm enjoying this new record, Motives, bro. Yeah, man. Um... I, I I I I wanted to say this, man. Like I, I felt like I felt a really uh, s- more serious tone with this record, and not that your music wasn't always s- serious, but I, I f- like this just felt different, man. Like, did you have a different approach going into this? Yeah, man. Uh, different approach, probably from all angles. You know what I'm saying? Musically, yeah. Spiritually, everything. Like. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Life life is seasons, right? Yep. So, and I think even when you are a believer, I think it's even more of seasons because I think we grow more, you know what I'm saying? Or we go through more, <laughs> we go through a lot more because we're more aware, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah, like the approach was different on every level. Um, like, and, and just growing as a man, growing as a mm. man, grow, growing as a believer, and then growing, growing business wise and understanding the business better. Yep. So, that, I mean, and we can go into depth on the, any of those top, any of those levels you want to yeah. go into. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I could hear it. You know, what I'm saying as someone who has listened to your music and been aware of you and known you. I mean, not like we're like friends, friends, but you know, I've, I've, we've known yeah. each other for a little while, like. I can definitely hear all of that on this record. Like this just this just felt Word. totally different than everything you had put out, man. Um mm-hmm. when you say man you you've grown as a man, what do you in what ways, man? Like what you know, and what what kind of what kind of shifted you in that direction, bro? Um I think that we grow, well, I don't want to say we. I grow through trials. Yep. Uh, I grow through because I'm stubborn, I only grow when I hit rock bottom. Type mm. So, you know, I definitely had within these last two years of life, I've I've hit a lot of places I've never hit before. Wow! Um, like it's crazy because like I've had. So I've did hit you a hit rock bottom? Highs. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, I've hit a lot of highs that I've never hit. Mm. But but when hitting those highs, uh, it's crazy. I was talking to my mom about this tonight when you hit those highs that you think you're going to get all those things that you dreamed of, right? Yep. And when you, when you attain it, I hit rock bottom because it, it wasn't what I thought, mm. you know, and you can, mm. you can go to, you can go to Ecclesiastes and you can study Solomon for that. Yep. But like, you know, I've, I've been able to, like God's graced me to really, you know, through hard work and diligent work, like get things I've wanted in life. You know what I'm saying? But when you get those things and God shows you maybe that's not what you wanted, you thought that's what you wanted, but in reality, it it holds no weight to the level what you want it to hold. Um, So it's not that I hit rock bottom like everything fell out from under me. Actually, I hit rock bottom because I got everything I wanted and it was nothing what I thought it would be type thing. Wow. So basically all is vanity. Yeah, man, it is. So that, I mean, that's kind of, that goes to the album title, Motive. Yep. Um, uh, th- there's this awesome TED Talks that, uh, like, I think Lecrae shared it with me two or three years ago. Yeah. Um, that TED Talks, uh, and it, it, I don't remember the actual title, but it was based about the why factor. And it's not even, it didn't even come from a believer, but, you know, it, it's cool from a business factor, but also from, if you view it from the lens of, you know, the Bible or a believer, like, you can really apply it to your life. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, like, I, it comes to, like, every decision we make in our life has layers and layers of motives on why we decide everything we decide, even down mm-hmm. to, like, what do we order at a restaurant? There's motives behind it. You know what I mean? And and it's crazy because, like, people, most people probably don't even think of it like that. You know yep. what I mean? Like, yep. but also in deep things, like, or, okay, what church do you go to? Okay, what music do you like? Yep. Everything in our life has layers of motives. And and so when I apply it to my life, like, you know, my loves and passions is music. That's why I do it. Okay, well, why do you do it? And uh, it's crazy because, like, when I first came out on the scene, like, my music was so different. Like, it really, it really did well. Mm-hmm. And then 
and then like there was a slump because I started work on Loved Ones, which is my side project, which yep. is you know my my reggae project. So I, I stopped doing Benja stuff for a little minute, and then like I kind of fell off, like it kind of fell off the map, and then it made me kind of question all these things because I had to basically like rebuild my brand. Mm. And so the question is like, why are you even doing this? Because like when things were going good, like I kind of shifted my mind almost more towards business when that was never uh, the reason why I ever did music ever in my life. Wow. Like I never did music to make money because I never made money through music. I did it because I loved it and, and it was in me and it needed to be released. You know what I'm saying? So uh, through this album process, I really had to check my motives on why I do what I do. And that really shaped the sound of it, the tone of it, and the lyrical content of it. That's good, bro. I always, I always, I, I'm kind of glad you mentioned the loved ones because I always, always kind of wondered about that because I'm, I love reggae music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And kind of knowing you kind of had these two sides, and um, mm -hmm. you know, with your music and everything like that, bro. Like, do you think we will get another loved ones project anytime soon? Yeah, so let me kind of explain that, too. So, like, you know, when I started, you know, if you listen to any of my, any of my previous albums, and yeah. especially my first, first ones, like, there's big organic tones and reggae influences. Yeah. And when I started making music... It's like real reggae, I, too. Like, it's not like... Yeah, yeah. It's like It's like roots, bro. <laughs> roots, yeah, roots. So, like, wh when I started making music, this is what I did. I made music that that moved my soul mm. and I tried to combine and I tried to combine it all. And I, and I feel like I did a pretty good job because whenever you make a fusion, it's really hard. Cause usually like that person will excel in one style and be kind of crappy in the other. But I really, you know, did my work and to the best of my ability and tried to combine, you know, multiple styles and, and I loved it. But, uh, this, now this piece goes into just growing as a businessman. Like I've learned in the music industry, diversity is cool, but it cannot be marketed wow. because you don't, you can't, you can't hone in on, on a on a niche market or a demographic. Yeah. Um. And and I constantly like when I would you know, you know, try to get on tours or whatever. I'd always hear you're too much of this or not enough of this or whatever, and it just frustrated me to the mm. like whatever. And then and God basically opened my eyes like, okay. So you love reggae and you love rap music. Stop combining them. Make two separate things because it's two different, different. Although a lot of rap heads love reggae, and a lot of reggae heads love rap. Like it just, it's not gonna it's work. It's two different together. markets. Yeah, it's two different markets. Like I'm, and you know, so to further myself, I decided to separate. And, and not only that, I didn't want to do Christian reggae. Although all my lyrics will still be inspired by the scriptures and God and all that. I didn't want to do Christian reggae because there is no market for Christian reggae. So that would be a waste of time and money because what are you, you going to do with that? So, and reggae is the only genre where you can straight up sing scriptures and be considered mainstream. So, you know, it works. Um, so basically I got the idea, all right, let me start Loved Ones and let me make this a reggae band and, and let's keep it strictly roots and organic and, and let that be my fix for that. And then if you take reggae out of Benja, what's left? Okay, it's urban music. Okay, well then if you're left with urban music, what urban, urban music moves you like? And this is another shift in, in the music I made. I used to make music with thoughts of, okay, I want to please the label because I want to get looked at at labels. I want to please radio because I want to get a radio song. I want to mm. try to please fans because I want to get more fans. I didn't care about that at all this time. This time I said, I'm making music that moves me I love and then I want to perform. Wow. So when when you take out, you know, the organic sound and the reggae sound from my, from my brand and 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 I'm and I and I survey urban music today, what moves me, what do I love and what touches my soul, you know, and that and that's what motives is. You know, it's it's um it's a trap album, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm trap singing, yep. but what's different about it is, you know, I'm not necessarily rapping you know, and, and the way we work the chords, it makes it accessible. It's not just like a hood trap album. It's like an accessible, almost pop trap album. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, When you look at the music industry, because you've been around this thing for a minute, bro. Like, I remember you even doing sound on, like, the first 
Unashamed yeah. tour. Um, yeah. And I didn't even know this. Tim Wolf from Hot 95.9 was telling me you were even a part of Group 1 Crew at one point. Yeah, um, yeah. I had no idea about that. But, man, like, when you just look at this this game right now, like, you look at the scene. Um, I'm even thinking about the first record on the album, Come Up. Like, what are your thoughts just on Christian rap, how it's, re- you know, being received in the in the marketplace, urban music, like, all of that stuff, man? Yeah, that's a uh, sensitive topic right there because uh, I think what we have is a lot of, uh, artists that are Christians that are trying to figure out their identity within that, and even me. Yeah. Um, and then I guess there's, isn't there a whole debate going on right now, like Cray versus CHH or something like that? <laughs> uh, I, I haven't been following it, but I, I, I'm, I'm assuming what it's about. Um, and it's crazy because this is what I think it is, and I want to hear what you think, too. Yep. So, um, Cross movement, although they weren't the first, they were kind of the first to really blow up Christian rap, right? Okay. And cross movement. And grit. Well, I guess you grits, gospel gangsters. Yeah, no doubt. But like a legacy. Like grits had like a hit. Yep. They had, they had some albums, you know, they had one massive yeah. hit. Yep. Um, but cross movement gangsters. was a movement, though. It was a movement. Yeah, they were movement. They, they were, were the, the first big movement. Big movement. And, yeah, and they discipled the cray, which is yeah, you know, yep, okay, yep. So, so cross movement was kind of, you know, the start, the epicenter of it all, right? Yep. And they were all pastors or aspiring pastors or authors or things of the such, right? Yep. Yep. So they set a tone that Christian rap basically needs to be sermons in rhyme form, mm. right? So, you know, and Lecrae followed suit for yeah. a while, right? Yeah. He was doing it. And then as he grew as an artist and grew as a man, like, you know, things changed and, yep. and, and, and whatever. Uh, but fans still have this, you know, stigma that Christian rap needs to be sermons that rhyme. And I don't agree with that. And a lot, a lot of people and a lot of artists don't agree with that, but a lot of fans do. I think that's why we have this debate going on right now. Um, and, and my record, you know what I'm saying? It has some controversy in that world too, because like, this is, this is the way I, I view it. Like art, um, fans are expecting rap music to basically be worship lyrics and that's not what a lot of us want to write um the scriptures say you know christ came to seek and save the lost right yep so so that should be our goal you know as christians as little christ as christ followers our goal should be to seek and save the lost well i don't think that's going to happen if we if all our lyrics are king of kings lord of lords you know what i'm saying that's just not going to work not they're they're going to tune it out. It's not going to work. There's not going to be any appeal beyond the body. So, you know, we're wrestling with this hard tension of obviously we want to uh, feed our flock, you know, feed our fans and our flock. But at the same time, we want to reach. We want we want to reach further. We want to go further and affect. We want to affect the lost. You know, what I'm saying we're not going to do that with those worship type lyrics. Um, so. You know, we might write more skill, might, might write more, you know, artistically, or might write more about life experiences through the lens of the scriptures. But since it's not super, super blunt, we get a lot of hate for it, and it, it's frustrating, man. Yeah. Really frustrating. So, um, a couple thoughts because you say you wanted my opinion about this. Um, yeah. I've always, let me say this, I've always been a supporter of both. Um, even when Cross Movement was, because I, I kind of started this towards the end of Cross Movement's run. Mm-hmm. Like, I started the Wade Radio Show in, like, 06. So yeah. they were still putting out records, but, you know, Flame, Lecrae, Truth, that was, like, the next generation that was on the come up, you know. Um, so I think Cross Movement did, like, one more record after I had started the show. Um, but 
that like there were there were they they made like the first time I saw a cross movement was on Rap City. You know. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it wasn't like I I don't I I don't like they definitely had a large appeal in the church. I mean, like like no make no mistakes about it. But I think it would be unfair to suggest that that's the only place they were. You know what I'm saying? Like um I I remember I met a guy who used to uh he used to be a part of Public Enemy, uh Bill Steffen. He was a producer for them. And he used to have a label situation with Sony Music. And I, I met him through just like, you know, just mutual friend. And we were meeting about some business stuff we were thinking about doing. And when I told him I was a Christian DJ, he said, oh, yeah, you, you heard a cross movement before. And I was not expecting this guy to have heard a cross movement. <laughs> and But watch what he said. He said, yeah, man, I tried to sign them to Sony back in the day when I had an imprint. And I said, what? He said, yeah, man, but we wanted them to tone it down. Like, we didn't right. want them to have Jesus in their music as much, and they didn't want to do it. So I think, man, I, I say that to say I, I think they did have some impact in that world. Now, to your point, um, I, I think just the reality of it is you made a great point, like, there are going to be some people that are turned off the minute you say Jesus, no matter what. Like, it's like, okay, Jesus in the music? Nope, that's not for me. I don't want to hear it. But I think the flip side of it is, like the Bible says, the only way people get saved is if they hear the gospel. Right. So at some point, at some point, the gospel's got to be proclaimed. Now, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Like, you don't have to proclaim the gospel in a song. You could proclaim it. In an interview, you could proclaim it right. at a concert. I mean, right. look, some guys, you know, definitely not throwing you in this boat or anybody that we've mentioned on this show so far, because I don't think this is Lecrae or Reach Records hard at all. But some people that are Christians don't see their, they don't think, hey, man, I have an obligation to even spread the gospel musically. Like, if it comes up, it comes up, but that's not my intent in doing this anyway. So, um, Man, I think there's just it's I don't think there's one size fits all, man. Like I think ultimately you you've got to do what you you believe in your heart God will be pleased with. And that's how I've always tried to govern myself, man, and not necessarily judge people on it. You know what I'm saying? Like I got love for a lot of people in this scene, you know. So I don't know, bro. Yeah. Another crazy thing is, like, we go through seasons, like I was saying, so, and the scriptures even say, like, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Like, we go through different seasons. For instance, my first record, Filtered, is really theological, because, yep. like, that's when I went through my spiritual transition and, like, yep. really dug into the Word. So, like, that's what the season I was in. Yep. And right now, I'm in, like, a life season. I'm dealing with life. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Drama of real life. Yep. So, what's more real than that? And who... Everybody can relate with that. So, and I write through the lens of the gospel, you know what I'm saying? Yep. But I, you know, I might not be writing a gospel quote unquote song, but if you listen to the lyrics, the way I respond to life situations is gospel centric. Yep. So that, that's my aim. Yep. Yep. I think for a lot of Christian artists, particularly Christian rappers, um, who start making music right after they get saved, they tend to right. probably lean more theological in the beginning because right. you're hearing all this wonderful truth that you never embraced, never heard before. Right. And you're like, man, I, I got to tell somebody this. And then, man, you know, maybe you start to get in your 30s and it's like, man, I got a family. I got bills. I'm trying to get out of right. debt. I'm, I'm, you know, I got a right. house. I got a mortgage. I'm, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, yeah. You know, Real life, man. you you start you start thinking and processing through those things, and so yeah, man, it is. I don't think it's one size fits all, bro. I, I really don't, man. I I think it's, um, I think there's a lot of different ways to minister to people through this music and be effective. And I think ultimately, man, we gotta follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, right? Motives, like your record, brother. You do it with all all with pure motives, man. You know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, let me tell you something crazy, man. I want to really challenge these listeners out here. Yeah. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not going to throw an umbrella statement out there, but this, this is some, piece, some, of our, some of our listeners. Yeah. So when, as I said earlier, when I started Loved Ones, our market was main, mainstream reggae. We were not going to do Christian reggae. You were even like playing a, at festivals and stuff. Say that again? I said you even played at some of the, the reggae festivals, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So when we put that out, uh, we basically said, you know, we want to we want to target the loss because it's the, that 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 that's our that's our aim. Yep. And let me tell you, bro, our reception has been incredible. I'm sure. Like, like the lost people, they don't even know I'm singing scriptures, but they're encouraged and and I'm planting seeds, and it's been nothing but love. Yep. But I received a lot of hate from so-called believers, Interesting. and that was so so discouraging because they all know us by our love. So where's the love in that? And and again, I'm not I'm not I don't want to get all these weird comments. I'm not saying everyone's like this, but a lot of vocal people online, so-called believers, are hating on it when we're out there trying to seek and save the lost. Yep. And and it hurts me deep inside because where's the love, guys? You know what I'm saying? And then to take it a step further. Um, it, it, it burdens me, it hurts me that I receive more love from a non-believer than a believer when our whole goal is to encourage everybody. You know what I'm saying? And then with this new record, Motive, this is another level of this, uh, because of uh, Facebook marketing now has opened up to market to wh- whatever demographic you want, yep. we, did some test mar- we did some test marketing to, uh, to like some similar possible similar demographics uh, of, of mainstream artists. Yep. And uh, me and my marketing guy were like, hey, let's just, let's just, you know, put some of our budget towards this and see the response. And man, it's been crazy the amount of love I've got from mainstream people that will send me message, you know, cursing left and right, and I don't have anything against cursing, but it's cool, to, to me it's cool to get a message like, you know, where the guy just cursing left and right, saying how much he loves the music, how much it it, it touches him, and he and he's down with it. And then I get a message from a believer hating on me, and that just confuses me beyond what my mind can comprehend. Why, you know, a person that most li- I'm not judging, but most likely they probably don't know the Lord, don't love the Lord, yep. but the music touches them, and they love it, and they encourage me to keep keep doing what I'm doing. And then I get a so-called believer saying, this isn't Christian music, da 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 just, you know, judging from every angle they can and being basically a modern-day Pharisee. And it hurts, man. It really hurts. Interesting, bro. Why do you... Well, well I, so I guess a couple things. Um, I guess if they're saying it's not Christian music about the reggae music, in a way, I mean, you've said it's not Christian music, but... Um, I kind of see your point because you're probably saying, man, they don't fully understand what it is I'm trying to do. Um, why do you, why do you think that is, bro? Like, why do you, see so you, I mean, you think it all deems back to the cross movement thing, like the tone that was set from that? I think that's, I think that's a piece, but I think, honestly, dude, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Um, I think that we're in a really critical like the vibe of people are real critical, but almost I feel like some people, and even in my life, because I tend to be a real critical, negative person. So I think, and so I can kind of possibly relate with what they might be doing. And I'm not saying people do this. I'm saying this might be a possibility. Is sometimes people tear down because it lifts them up, and I don't know why that is, but. It, makes them feel better if they can tear somebody down. Mm. Uh, and and maybe that's just the vocal people or the internet thugs or whatever you want to call them um, that do that, but I think it needs to stop, man. If you got somebody that's out here trying to encourage people and lift people up and you can and it's, and it's there, but like just because we're not saying King of Kings, Lord of Lords, lift them up high in our lyrics, like 
I don't think that, you know, <clears throat> here's the thing. If our lyrics are not directly offensive or directly tearing you down or directly encouraging you to do something bad, why is it, why is it non-Christian at that point? You feel me? Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know I think what constitute as Christian, I think isn't always defined well either. Because I think people have different expectations, you know. So right. like, some of it too. Some of it too. If I'm honest, like some of it too is people will say, "Hey, man, I'm not a Christian artist," but then they will market their music on platforms that are Christian. Where it's, okay, you know what I'm saying. And so I think I, I think that's when the confusion comes in because it's like, "Hey, I'm not a Christian artist." But I'm like, for instance, like, like, I mean, here's a big elephant in the room. For instance, Lecrae has said repeatedly, and this is not a knock on him, but this is just the facts. He said, yo, I'm not a Christian artist. Uh, don't label me that. He said that probably a million times in interviews. But then he gets awards in Christian categories at award shows. Well, he can't control what they nominate him for. Yeah, but a lot of these you submit for. I mean, it's not. I mean, like, bro, I, I, I'm, I, like, I don't want to go crazy. Like, I understand how these processes work. Like, I understand with the Grammys, bro. You sit down with the committee, you hire a publicist. Like, there's interviews online with his publicist that he had at the time about a camp, like the whole campaign she ran to get him in the in the in the in the eyes of the people that vote. Right. Like, I mean, so I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I think when people, I think when people see that type of stuff, people that don't fully understand the industry and everything, like, they don't, like, I've always, let me put it to you like this. I've always felt like a big part of, for him, the reason why he didn't want the label is because, hey, man, I have a huge Christian fan base. I want to continue to grow my fan base. There's an opportunity for me to cross over. And if I say I'm not a Christian artist over there, it may be easier for me to do that. I mean, because the reality is, man, he still has songs like Tell the World and, um, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's not like he doesn't have quote unquote Christian songs on his albums. But I just think the way some of this stuff has been communicated, people have just been confused by it. And so it trickles down to. Even a smaller artist like Spazzy Rocket or someone like yourself or someone like John yeah. Gibbs or people see this and they're like, I don't know what to make of this because, you know, like John Gibbs will say, and this is my man, like me and him have had this conversation. He'll say, I'm not a Christian artist, but then he goes on tour and he, he raps in churches. I went to go see him. I have no problem with it. It's a dope show, but it's like. I think people just see some of this stuff and they're like, I don't know what to make of it. I'm confused. I'm expecting one thing because you're saying this, but then something else happens here. So I don't know, bro. Well, maybe we don't need to try to categorize or put things in a box. At the end of the day, what, at the end of the day, okay. So at, in reality, there's no way to, there's no way the fans can truly know who someone is, right? They only know what, people put out right yeah that's that's another point and, and, right so if you examine their lyrics or if you watch interviews you can get a decent idea of their motives right or why they do what they do or what motivates them or, or their heart behind it and that's that's where that's where it lies you know what i'm saying like it's clear there, there should be no confusion on gives or the crazy message, like there's, there, I don't think there's there's no misleading within the lyrics. Listen to the lyrics, read the lyrics. Like it's there, it's very clear. So I don't think we need to get so caught up on do I want to be called a rapper or a Christian rapper or a Christian artist or an artist. Like I don't think like why do we need to get so caught up in that? What do the lyrics communicate? What is the overall? thread that's woven in between every song in their album and then that's that's how you could i guess quote unquote judge it 
You feel me? Like, we don't need to get caught up in that. I don't even know why this needs to be such a big debate and argument amongst us. Like, I agree, bro. Like, I, I, think, it, I think it's clear. Like, yeah. who cares what you want to call yourself? At the end of the day, we're all artists. We don't need to call ourselves Christian artists or artists, and, and other rappers don't need to call themselves 5% rappers or whatever. They're just rappers. Like, and then you let the content speak for itself. I'm with you, bro. Like I, I've, I, I haven't really been a part of these debates for for a while. So I'm, I totally agree with you there. Um, I've just been kind of personally sitting back observing this and just trying to focus on doing what I believe God wants me to do, man. Like, cause sometimes, you know, just dealing with this whole theme of motives, bro. Like, we, like the truth of the matter is, bro. You don't really know somebody's motives unless you nope. you you have a Do real right. relationship with them intimately, man. Like right. you know what I'm saying? Like and I'm talking like local community. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't really you don't you don't really know, man. If you're not really in like constant communication with someone, observing them, whatever, man, you don't really know their motives, man. And I've seen people fool people from a motive standpoint, and they in community. <laughs> True. 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 You know? But so, at, at the end of the day, God, God can still use it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think, I mean, man, I like, want, this, I, this is my thing, man. I, I'm, I'm a big, I'm big on communication. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really big on communication. And I, I feel like part of the reason why we are where we are in this scene right now is there hasn't really been the best of communication with some of this stuff um, in certain places. Like, um, and I think, I, I think the reason why so many fans, because at this point, a lot of this is fans, fan driven. And I think, right. I think they're confused because there isn't always communication. Like, so, so, they they get they get bits and pieces, but they may not consume everything the same way that we do because we're in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Like we see everything. We talk in the guys behind the scenes. Fans just see what gets posted on message boards, websites, right. yada yada yada. So they don't always see the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it comes down to one. Do you, do you like the music? Yeah. How does it move your soul? Yep. And and if and if none of the lyrics contradict what you believe or the scriptures, then support it. That that's what it is. No. Uh, I think that's good, man. It's a good way to look at it, brother. It's a good way yeah, to look I at think, it. I think I think we're over analyzing it. Yep. And we're kind of on a rabbit trail right now. We need to bring it back, but that that's that's <laughs> my thoughts on. It. Yeah. No, you. I think you're dead on, brother. I think you are definitely. If the music moves you, yeah. That that's the Holy Spirit right then and there. First of all, yeah. If the music moves you, yeah. And the lyrics do not directly contradict what you believe or the scriptures, then be a fan. Stop over analyzing and stop judging. Yep. Done deal. Yep. Man, you know what's funny though, bro? When I was when we kind of started this wave of the conversation, I was asking you about just the urban music scene and how we're accepted. I was more so talking about the overall like CCM industry and all of that. Like I wasn't even thinking about all this Christian rapper <laughs> stuff. But I guess it it needed to. It was a good convo, man. It was a good yeah, good, yeah, part of the good. Convo, bro. Cause cause it is it is. I mean, it's a big topic right now, bro. Like every everywhere I go. I'm, people are asking me that. Even I'm doing periscopes. I'm doing Bible studies on periscopes. Anytime I do a Q and A, people are saying, "Man, what's what's your thoughts on Lecrae? What's your <laughs> thoughts on this? What's your thoughts on Andy Minio's interview? What's your thoughts on this?" I'm just like, "Yo, man, like, I don't even want to talk about this right now." You know? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I just feel like there's just more important matters in the world. You know what I'm True. saying? True. True. More important matters in the world, man. Um, I, man, I, I'm, 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 I am curious your thoughts on this, man. Um, 
because this has been a big social issue, is just police brutality and Black Lives Matter. Um, just knowing that you move in a lot of different types of circles, man. Um, just I'm just curious your thoughts on all this stuff happening, man. I mean, you know, we we're doing this on uh we're doing this interview on Tuesday, November twenty fourth. So, you know, they just released that video in Chicago tonight, you know, with that kid that got shot sixteen times by the cops, man. Man. Whew. So funny you bring that up because I recently had a had a I had a run in with the police. Wow! And uh, it was not because of anything I did wrong. Yeah. Um, but I experienced I experienced the depravity of the police. Um, and I'm not saying all police are bad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Because two week two weeks after this, I had a, a great experience with the police. But uh, I I experienced a profiling situation and I experienced uh, a very angry cop with a lot of chips on his shoulder, mm. you know, and, 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 and it was a situation to where he was verbally attacking me and one of my best friends. And, you know, I had, I was, I was in a situation where I could have been, <laughs> a victim to a, a hate crime from a police my officer. Goodness, and, and by the grace of God, I mean, my blood was boiling. I'm not going to go into the details of it. My blood was boiling, and I could have reacted in a way that would have made him react in a lethal way. Mm. And by the grace of God, he, God calmed me down and calmed the whole situation down, and nothing came from it. But I say that to say I've experienced it, and what I've taken from it is police are humans yeah and and they all have their past their histories that have shaped how they view things and have shaped their their drive on what they do or whatever you want to call it and and they're humans and the problem is a lot of them maybe shouldn't be police if they have a past or whatever that creates racial hate or racial whatever you want to call it and uh we're dealing with humans and we're dealing with a fallen world and uh i don't have an answer for it i, I would wish that there's a way to filter out those type of officers and because it it, it disgusted me mm. it angered me but like i said by the grace of god I, he was able to calm me down to where I didn't do something dumb and provoke more. Um, but then, like I said, a week after that, you know, I, I had an ex experience with the police that was super graceful on, on the police officer's part. So that was God just showing me, hey, not all officers are like this. It's just some, and they're humans, and da da da. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I don't know if I, have a, I don't know if I answered your question, but they're humans, and and. The problem is, I understand why certain people react the way they do. And I also under, I understand, doesn't mean I agree with, I understand why certain police officers act the way they do. Mm. Um, doesn't make it right. Yep. But uh, it's tough, man. It's tough, and I, I don't think it's going to get better. I think it's going to get worse. Wow. Wow. You, and at the end of the day, bro, like, this is prophesied. You know what I'm saying? Read the scriptures. Like, this is just prophesied. This is prophesied being fulfilled, like, that we're nearing the end times, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Yep. 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 Do you think Christians should, um, like, get involved in this process, in this political process, in protests, that kind of stuff? Uh, I don't know if I have an answer to that because I don't know how effective protests are. I yeah. think we should be. I think we should be involved. I think a lot of prote protests uh, end up being too emotional, mm -hmm. and then emotional. When things get emotional, like I don't think we ever act right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like we, when you act out of emotion, it's rarely done. You know the way it should be done to where it can be effective. <clears throat> so I don't. 
I'm sure some protests are very effective, but I think a lot of them maybe don't end up good. So I don't know if protests are the answer, but should we be involved? Yes. How should we be involved? I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. Um, I think we can be involved, like artists can be involved, you know, with our content, you know, with things we think we write. You know what I'm saying? Yep. 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 That's good, bro. And this, I, I mean, I've always, um, Florida has always been, you know, where you live, just an interesting place to me because it's such a melting pot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys have all different types of races, nationalities, that kind of stuff down there. And mm-hmm. I, ironically, probably one of the most diverse places in America, I just think this recent wave was sparked off by something that happened, you know, outside of Orlando and Sanford with Trayvon Martin. Yeah. Yep. Mhm. Did that did that change the city? Um, like just that incident, like did it, you know, like cuz obviously there was like a big national story, you know, boom boom boom, but I think it I think it angered a lot of people. Wow. You know what I'm saying? On both sides, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't. I guess I only know one side. You know what I'm saying? I so you. I don't really know the other side. But um, I don't know if it changed it. I think it. Yeah, I guess it did change it because it made some people more cautious. It made some people more angry. So I guess it would change us in that sense. And then, like, it did change me in a sense. Like, I'm way more cautious out and about. Like, mm. I'm way more observant. I'm cautious. Mm. And I'm praying for the Holy Spirit to to lead me. You know what I'm saying? Like with the experience I just had with that, where it could have turned really bad. You know what I'm saying? I could have been on the news. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. by grace of God, I wasn't. And 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 God was able to, you know, calm that situation down, and everything was cool. But yeah. um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I've there's a lot of talk when that went down, and you know, I didn't know any of those guys personally, but I know there's a lot of talk. People knew you know, the, the shooter and, uh, and, and obviously he's proven himself to be not a good man. And, you know, probably, you know, and that's crazy. You know, all the other things that surfaced, you know, after that, you know, so I don't know, bro. It's, it's wild. It's deep, right? It's, it's like the, the more, the more I see this stuff, the more I think, man, this is, this is, to me, this is the perfect example of the depravity of men. And True. not just talking about George Zimmerman in general, but just this yeah. whole racial climate that we have right now because it almost feels so bad that no one seems to even know how to fix it in the natural, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 you know, it's like we're, we're, you know, it's like, oh man, do we protest? Do we, do we need to pass more legislation? Do we need to educate people more? And it's like, nah, man, it's like the gospel at the core is just going to have to really change some people's hearts, man. Yeah, man, I don't, I don't even pretend to know, think that I have an answer for that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm. That that that's <laughs> that's it. That's the, that's the point I'm saying. Like I, I almost, yeah. I felt like tonight, Benja. I wanted to tweet something about that video, and I was like, man, I don't even know what to say other than yeah. everybody needs to be at the table figuring out how we fix this, man. Well, here's my stand. I know my proclivity to love the debate or love to argue or love yeah. whatever you want. So my stance is I have decided to bow out of it and yeah. not – be too vocal because one, I don't want my flesh to rise up and just do dumb things. Um, but also like, I don't have the answers. Yeah. I don't. So I'm not going to start these debates by posting my, you know, limited opinion yeah. on what I think is the answer. What I think the solution is. I don't know. Yeah. Um, like, like we said, we're living in a fallen world and I mean, if anything, we just need to be more cautious and mindful of it. And, and when, like when you're, run, I don't know, bro. I don't even know what to say, but it's it's deep, and I, I don't know that it will ever be resolved. Like I said, I think it's prophecies of the end times. 
And I think it's only going to potentially get worse as time goes on. Oh, I feel you, bro. I don't want it to, but at the same time, if that's going to, if that's fulfilling prophecies to bring our Lord and Savior back, then Maranatha. Amen. Amen. Um, hey, man, so let me shift this for a minute, bro. Yeah. Um, we about to head into the new year, man, and um, you stay in uh, extreme fitness shape, brother. Give us some workout tips, man. Give give the Wado Radio listeners some tips, man, for staying in shape like like Benjamin, man, because you be getting it, bro. All right. Well, here, here's the thing, man. I have a lot of friends that go through their seasons of working out. Like, yeah. like me. For whatever like reason. me. You have friends like, <laughs> like Wado who go through these seasons where I'm getting it for a minute and then I just fall off the wagon. Right now I'm off the wagon, Benja. So this is for me. <laughs> the best way I can make it make sense then is apply it. It's a direct metaphor to your spiritual life. Mm. You cannot... I'm... I, well, we do. I'm sure we have our spiritual seasons. I know we do. Yep. But at the same time, like, if you want to grow spiritually, you know what you need to do. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like there, there's not a formula, but there is. Yeah. Okay. Stay in the Word. Stay in worship. Yep. Stay in church. Stay in community. Yep. That is like kind of like whatever. The ground, you know, structure to build upon, right? So if you want to build your body, it's the same thing. Stay working out yep. and stay eating healthy. Yep. And stay around people to do the same. Yep. It's, it's the exact same correlation. So this is what this. I need, man. I need you to move to New Jersey, bro. <laughs> I need you to Let's move to it, New man. Jersey so we can hang out. I'll even be your DJ. Yeah, it's a little bit too cold up there. Man. <laughs> <laughs> see, <laughs> see, you like wearing them tank tops, bro. That's what it is, bro. Man, I, like I, I enjoy the heat. I really do enjoy the heat. <laughs> But, I mean, that's what it is, man. It's consistency. Yeah. If, in, in any area of life you want to yeah. grow, it's consistency. Do not go on these extreme highs and extreme lows. Yep. Stay consistent. It, and it needs to be a lifestyle. It yep. needs to be a lifestyle. Like you, and here's what it is. This, this, is your, this is your nugget of gold. Do not give yourself an option. Mm. If you give yourself an option to work out, you're going to choose not to. Yeah. And that goes even with me. If I give myself an option, well... Well, do I feel like working out today, or do I feel like eating healthy? The option is the the answer is no. I don't feel like it. Yeah, do I feel like going to church every Sunday? No, but I go because I want to grow. So if I don't give myself an option and I, and I constantly tell myself this is what I'm doing, I don't have an option because I never feel like doing it. So if you don't give yourself an option, if you create a lifestyle, you know, whatever is realistic for your schedule. But for me. I I need to tell myself I'm working out five days a week and I'm eating healthy. There's no options. I'm, I'm always going to pick the healthier option and I'm always going to work out. And that's how you'll see results. I love that, man. You just gave me some motivation right now, brother. There it is. You just gave me some motivation, man. Some motivation to check my motives when it comes to my weight loss, man. <laughs> I, need, I need to get on this thing, man. I need to get on this thing. Yes, sir. Okay, man. Favorite song on the on the record, man. Favorite song. Favorite song. Whew. Honestly, man, I don't I don't know that I can answer that because each song has a different reason why I love it. You sure. know what I'm saying? Um, content wise and production wise or melody wise, like there's different reasons why I love everyone. So I really don't have an answer to that. But um, like I said, I made music that. I didn't make music with labels or radio or anything in mind. I made music that moved me. But also, you know, I, I, I'm a studier. I study the culture. I study music. And I study and I study trends that, that are effective because I don't want to make music that's not effective. So, you know, I'm a fan of current music. So, basically, I made music, current music, the music I like. I just didn't make, you know, old music that's not relevant. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So there's there's different reasons why I love love every song. I, I really don't I can't answer that question. You might need to ask me a different one. Yeah. Oh, that's good, bro. That's good. That's good, man. That's as I mean, listen, bro, when you can when you can genu genuinely legitimately say that about every song on your record, I mean that's you know, that's big. Um one record I did want to ask you about. 
Um, yeah. I guess I don't know if this is going back to the Christian rapper thing, but um, the record you had with Crazy Bone, bro, I was I was surprised to see that. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's honestly kind of one reason why I did that. Like, I kind of wanted to create, uh, a, you know, that that question there. Yeah. But um, anybody that's followed Bone, like, you know there's been spiritual undertones from the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, talking with a buddy of mine, you know, that was connected with, with Lazy Bone, and, you know, I said, you know, do you have connections with Crazy or Busy? Because those are the, the dudes that I love, and I would yeah. love to feature because um, growing up, they were, honestly, I don't know who else rapped melodically before them. You know what I'm saying? That, and that's the, you know, if you know my music, that's kind of the way I do it. Like, I, yeah. I rap melodically, you know what I'm saying? I sing with rhythm. So, huge influence on why I even do what I do. You know what I'm saying? So, when I got that opportunity to possibly collab with them, and then also, like, he told me, like, you know, crazy does love the Lord, like, regardless of where he might be at on his spiritual journey, he does love the Lord. Um, that was, that's huge, you know, to hear that from somebody that, you know, is connected with that crew. But more, more importantly than anything, the song is called Climbing, and the song is talking about <clears throat> basically attaining everything you dreamed of or yeah. reaching the goals and climbing, climbing to get what you want. Um, and I don't know anybody else that sold 50 million albums. So I picked him because I wanted to hear his perspective on what what does it what did it feel like or what was the reality of it when you reached that point and you had stadium sold out stadium tours and you had sold millions of albums like what what did what was that like was it what you thought it was yeah. or was it what you didn't think it was like what I said earlier like yeah. when I've attained my goals I realized that it wasn't what I wanted because it didn't hold the weight of joy or contentment that I thought it would give me. Mm. So I really wanted to hear from him because he's experienced a different level, you know, of success than I have. Yep. 50 million albums, like we can't, who, who's done that? You know right. What I mean? So probably that was, nobody, nobody's, <laughs> we just, yeah. none of us may my, never that, get there again because people yeah. are buying records like yeah. that. Exactly. Yeah. Going back to what we were talking about with album sales. So, yeah. Um, I really wanted that perspective. Unfortunately, I didn't get to cast that vision because <laughs> he actually liked the song so much he recorded the first day he got the track. Wow. Yeah, we were supposed to have a conference call and it never happened because he was just feeling it so much that he just he went he just in on it. He did it, yeah. Yeah. And uh, when, you, when you work with an artist on that caliber, um, they kind of want to do what they want to do. Yep. And they kind of feel like they don't... Like, they don't need direction or, yep. like, to me, like, to him, I might be nothing more than a paycheck. You sure. know what I'm saying? So, yep. um, that was kind of a weird thing because I've never in my life featured someone that I did not know personally and I could call or that, like, knew me personally. So, it was a different situation. I have to deal with a manager and have to go through that and never be able to, like, really connect. Yep. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to cast that vision or get that in his lyrics. But what is cool is he he loved the track so much he went in on it and he went in naturally like kind of what he what he naturally felt and he he killed the track um, and he gave his perspective and honestly the third verse that I that I wrote on that is probably some of my favorite lyrics on the whole record mm. and it's just really talking about eternal perspective and uh, um, some of the most dearest lyrics to my heart in my whole album the yeah. third verse on on that song. Yeah. So <clears throat> it didn't come out. It didn't uh, come out the way I envisioned it. But obviously, God is sovereign, and He chose it to happen the way it did for whatever reason that I I still don't know. But I trust Him, and it's a dope song. It's getting great response. It's one of the favorite songs on the record, um, and I'm honored to have a legend and a huge influence in my uh, music career on the record. And uh, that that might be one of my favorite records on the album because see i knew i'd get you to answer that <laughs> yeah it, it, it's one of my favorite because just from the intro bro like yeah. there's something in there that moves my soul when i hear it like it it just touches me you know what i'm saying yeah yeah that's good man that's good stuff bro um so benjamin what's 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 next for you in the 2015 going into 2016 bro yeah man just really working hard to market this record and make it all it can be you know trying to Trying to set up a tour right now, 
you know, been in a lot of talks with Nehemiah yep. from Kingdom Promotions and, and trying to see what we can get going. Um, as you know, touring is really hard. It's very um, hard. And we're, we're trying to make it happen. We're trying to see what's up. Um, but, you know, what, when I put out this record, this was a really, really monumental time in my life because this is the first time ever in my life that I put out an album. And I, um, this is not a probably a very accurate analogy, but for the lack of a better one, this is the one that I, that I think of in my mind. Um, music is my baby, right? Like mm -hmm. I've sacrificed my life for it. Yeah. I've sacrificed it so much that I'm not married and I don't have kids because I've given of my life towards music mm. to encourage us. You like the apostle Paul. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying in your singleness, in your singleness, brother, your singleness. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I but I, hopefully that will change. But anyway, um, <laughs> But anyway, up until this point, like I've, I've I've given up my life to this thing, right? So music is my baby, yeah. and this is the first album that I've ever had the mindset like God, this is all I love, this is all You've given me. But at the same time, I'm I'm willing and I am putting it on the altar for you to do with what you choose. Mm. Should you choose to bring a ram for me to sacrifice, or you want me to sacrifice my music? I'm doing it. Yeah. You know, the Abraham, Abraham and Isaac thing. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. I've never given an album to the Lord in that sense. Like, God, I am content and joyful with whatever you choose to do with this, big or small. I'm content already because I know that souls are going to be affected whether it blows up and I go on a big tour or it does what it does and I don't go on tour. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's a really cool place in my mind and heart to be able to say that because it's hard to say that but god has broken me down in these last two years to where i know that he is ultimately the author of everything and he is the door opener and the door closer and he gives and he takes away when he chooses and i trust him and i trust his sight trust his vision i trust everything about him to where i know that my plans my goals mean nothing without him directing it and me being submitted to it. That's good, bro. That's good, man. Benjamin, man, thank you for uh, thank you for this conversation, man. This was a this is a very enjoyable interview, bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. Um, again, everybody listening, motives is in stores right now. Support the homie. Y'all heard his heart. Benjamin, man, appreciate you, bro. Yeah, man. I kind of feel like a lot of people ask me, like, why you do music? Like, I feel like at the end of the day, like, when God puts something in your heart, you have no choice, right? Like, if it's in you, you can't fight it. Just like when God calls you. You can try to fight God all you want, but if God has called you and chosen you to be his son or daughter, he will get you at one point in time or another, right? And that's what music is to me. Like, I have, I have no option. It's in me, and I have to release it, and my prayer is that it encourages people. On the way to radio show On the way to radio